Hello, welcome to Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. Today we're going to draw the amazing metallic wood boring beetle. But wait a minute, this is not a boring beetle. Look at this. I'm going to put this closer to the camera and you're going to see something amazing. Look how shiny. Look how it changes colors. Isn't this simply amazing? Do you see all those greens and blues and yellows? Well, this is just amazing. Well, this is definitely no boring beetle. We're going to use, as always, a non-photo blue pencil or any blue for that matter, a 2B graphite pencil, uh, an eraser and a sharpener. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at this beetle, its overall shape. It is very pointy here and is much rounder at the front. So I can see the two antennae coming from the head. Then we see the thorax and then we see this part of the abdomen. So I'm going to move it to the side very carefully so we can start our drawing. So I think it's going to go from here to here and I'm going to start by making an oval and an oval is just a circle that we stretched and the important thing about this oval is that it's going to be a little bit thinner here and a little bit rounder there so let's see if I can do this a little bit thinner there and a little bit rounder there and I can totally see that the eyes are there head is right underneath so I'm just gonna leave a little bit of room for the eyes and then and then I noticed that all the abdomen is like a heart shape and it comes approximately around here let's see yeah I think that would do and it has this very nice shape. It's like a heart. And then there's a line that goes all the way. Straight line all the way here. And then I see here that the green part ends a little bit earlier. And then there's a darker piece right there. I'm also going to add the placeholder for the antenna. I can see there one is like this and the other one is like that. They're very short, but they have tiny, tiny segments. I'll take some photos for you to see them up close. This part here that we see, that's the thorax. The head is right underneath and I can see the eyes poking out. So the head is under so we can see only a little bit and then this long heart shape piece here that's going to be the abdomen and this metallic wood boring beetle is from the family of and this is a very cool name Bu Prestidae and all of these beetles all of them have something called iridescence and that's what we've seen before, all these amazing metallic and reflecting uh, colors that look like, makes it look like it's a metal that has been spray painted blue and yellow and green. But this iridescence quality is not because of pigments. It's because the actual structure, if we were to see up, up, up close, we would see that the surface is very irregular. So depending on how the light hits, it will give us this shininess. So that is something called uh, structural coloration. And it's the exact same principle as, you know, when you put music and you have the compact disc, you always see a little bit of rainbow here and a little bit of rainbow there. It's the exact same principle. So as all insects, we have six legs. And where do these legs come from? Well, they all come from the thorax. And we have six legs, six times, and they all come from the thorax. 
But uh, some might look like they come from the abdomen. You see, they're coming from there, but what we don't see is that piece of leg that is connected to the thorax. Only if we would, only if we had like X-ray uh, vision, we would see that they all come from the thorax. But we're gonna draw what we see, and I'm gonna uh, let's see. One leg is coming. Looks like it's coming from there. And we have a first segment that does that, another segment that does this, and another segment that does that. And the same on the other side. And all these segments have names and we're gonna learn them when we go with the graphite. Then we have another segment that comes from here, here, and here. Isn't that funny that some legs are going, the front legs are looking forward, and then the middle and the back leg are uh, looking backwards. One, two, three, four, five, and then our last leg six so all insects all insects have six legs so the first thing i'm going to draw is this very very interesting shape on top and we have defined it here very well but i want to make sure that i think it's a little bit long so i'm going to just draw it there and it's a little bit thicker there and then it thickens again and it goes right there. So these are the details that I observe as I am drawing with a graphite pencil. And it goes right there. And then this heart shape here. And then the abdomen goes a little bit side but then it's pretty much two straight lines approximately until the leg and then from then on it just goes in and then we have this tiny tiny end here tiny tiny end there and these two lines together Making straight lines is difficult, so I like to go little by little. And then this other half, two. So far, it's very symmetrical, and that means that this half is the same as that half. So we can actually add a few things to make it asymmetrical while keeping the structure of the uh, beetle. For example, okay, let's see the head. We can see the head is right underneath. And we see still the big two eyes because they're very big. And the antenna, actually the antennas are made of tiny segments. So you know what? To break the symmetry, I'm going to make this antenna go a little bit like this and that I will leave like that because the antenna move are sensory organs to check and see where should I go and if you see up close they have they're made of tiny tiny pieces that can end very thin at the end I'm going to sharpen my pencil and the antenna move so I'm going to add these lines to, to, to imply movement. And then we're going to do the other antenna. It was also made out of tiny, tiny pieces. How many? Well, I'm sure that if I had an, if I had a lens, I would be able to count them. There we go. So we have, we broke a little bit the symmetry. It was, everything was the same. And now we changed a little bit of the antenna. So at least now we have a little bit of uh, asymmetry. Let's go with the leg, shall we? 
Uh, the first part that we see uh, on the leg, that's going to be called the femur. And I see that it's a little bit of a square shape. And then, so that's the femur. And then we see the tibia. And the tibia has like a triangular shape. So it's a triangle with curvy lines that looks a little bit like this and then so that would be the tibia and then the last piece is the foot so all these that we're going to draw here is the foot and the foot is made out of tiny 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 pieces Let's see if i can count them one two three four and five so let's see it's like tiny triangles two three four and five and at the end of the last one we see two little structures like this those are called tarsal claws what they are claws uh the other legs are going to have the same parts We have our tibia and one thing I've noticed is that it has a little bit of like two spikes there. Oh, I wonder if that one in the front too. In the front, I see it has a little bit of hairs, but I cannot see very well if it has these spines that I see there. And then the last piece is the foot, which is like tiny triangles. I could count five, so I'm going to stick to one, two, three, four, and five. I hope I count them well. The last one is a little bit longer and it ends on these tarsal claws. And then the very last one, again, the femur and this tibia. Is also triangular and I also see these tiny tiny spikes there and I'm gonna take photos up close so you can see all these in detail so one triangle two three four five with a tiny tarsal claws I'm gonna do the other legs on this side we have our femur and because of perspective some legs might appear shorter with the tarsal claws and and I've been reading things I've been learning so many things about this type of beetle because I didn't know that boring also meant to um, drill holes I thought that boring meant uninteresting and apparently boring also means to drill holes and why are they called a drilling a hole drilling beetle well because that's what they do they feed they feed from from wood and when they are hungry oops i made one more <laughs> there we go so this is our beetle and as I said they eat a lot of roots and logs let's write that here they eat uh, logs and roots and stems of dying trees and or or recently burned forests 
rethinned uh, burned forests so that's what they eat and they dig and drill all these tunnels in the wood because what they not always look like this there's a previous stage called larva and we're going to draw that too because it's very cool we're going to draw it here at the larva stage so um first there's an egg and then we have a larva and the larva is very cool we're going to draw it here so we're going to draw uh some sort of a uh, this shape I don't know if it's an S or a mountain and a tiny valley. And we're going to draw a big circle here. And that's going to start, that's going to be the beginning of our larva. So when beetles are born, they first become a larva. And uh, the larva has a tiny head here. And then this is all the head. And then it has, we're going to draw a smaller circle. And then we're going to start drawing even smaller circles along the path that we created. And the very, very end is tiny, tiny circle. And here in the head, we have the mouth parts. So this is the head and that's the body. And guess what? These, we're going to make another circle very light here. Because this type of larva is called a flat headed. A flat headed. And because it drills holes, it's a flat headed borer. And this larva is very, very hungry. We're going to add some color later. But you can see that this larva has drilled a tunnel inside a piece of wood and she's eating all this wood it's a very very hungry larva it's inside the tree and it's just chewing eating 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 so i'm gonna make a little bit of lines here but not they don't meet just a little bit and here they can meet a little bit so now we have drawn the larva of this beetle and when this larva has eaten so much that it's just like okay i'm ready i'm ready to be a beetle it becomes a pupa which is kind of like a sleeping bag it goes to sleep it goes through metamorphosis which means change in shape and form and then we have the beetle so that's, that is very interesting. I, I found that super, super duper interesting. There's something also that we need to know is that beetles, this type of beetle has wings. It has um, two types of wings. The ones that we see here in the outside, those were wings at one point, but they're very hardened and they call elystra. And they are very solid. They're very hard and they're protecting the wings that are actually for flying that are underneath so we have that from the thorax we have the legs and the wings they attach to the thorax and they're in the thorax there's so many tiny i see so many dots so many it looks like a strawberry when you look at a strawberry at close, it looks like that to me. 
So I cannot wait to get started with my colors because as you see, this is so interesting. I'm going to move it around so you see what do you see that yellow there, even red. And here I see blue, whoa, and red and yellow. That is so cool. So I can't wait to get started. So I'm going to get all my pencils here because I see reds and oranges and yellow and I see blue. So I'm going to get all the, it's like a rainbow. So I'm going to start actually with just a little bit of a dark green. Uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And if you don't know what the color of your green is, you can try here and the outside of the paper is like, oh yeah, that's the one I want. So I think for my beetle, I'm going to start with very light green only here. Only here. Until the very bottom. But it's just like a line of green. And it's going to be a little bit thinner on the other hand here. And look how very lightly I'm pressing because I don't want to press too hard. So that's going to be our first. It's a dark green, but I press very lightly. I'm also going to add a little bit of green around here, the same, same green. And then a little bit on this side. They don't have to be symmetrical. Let's see what else, what else? I also with this same green, I'm just going to make a very thin, very thin line of color that goes all the way down here and on this side this line is going to start here so now we have our first ta -da, color ooh this is this is oh my goodness this is so pretty now I think I'm going to use um, a little bit of a yellow and I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here, here on the, on the part that this uh, thorax, which by the way, th that the part of the thorax that we see here, because this is a top view, it has a very cool name that I forgot to add. So the upper thorax, the, the upper part of the thorax is called the pronotum i just thought that was a cool name so I, for I i forgot to add it so this part here of the pronotum that's going to be this very 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 bright yellow and then i'm going to add a little bit of light yellow on this very 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 top And then with the same yellow, I'm just going to color this white space that we left before. And it's very light in this one too, but not till the end, just a little bit here. I also see iridescence in the legs, but I'm going to take care of those later. First, I'm going to try to work on the, <laughs> on the main body. Uh, I'm going to use another green that is a little bit different and see how that goes. I'm going to try to color on top of the yellow, but I'm going to start from here, from the bottom. And I'm going to go very lightly. Whoa, and I'm having this cool, amazing color. And I'm not going to finish here. I'm going to finish earlier, lifting it, lifting it, lifting it. So it's kind of fading away. Let's do this one, shall we? Okay, so we start a little bit harder here and we're going on top of the yellow that we applied before. And when we are about here, we start lifting, 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 lifting. There we go. And suddenly we have like this amazing gradient. So amazing that now I can go 
even darker with the previous green that we use and start adding a little bit more of uh, color and you can uh, hold the pencil like this if you're near the edge like I am now and then you can switch it to here when you're coloring um, but you have to press uh, hold the paper with one hand otherwise it's a mess and everything moves and it's a little bit of a mess oh so i'm going a little bit darker here and also a little bit darker here and it has so many dots i i don't think i can actually uh in the time that we have i don't think i can go into each and one of the dots and look i'm doing this line a little bit darker on one side only only on one side and i'm also going to darken these a little bit just a little bit and then fade away darken and then fade away this is so cool i'm going to use the exact same thing but i don't want to color this part yet because i see a lot of blue actually so i just want to make sure that i add a tone that gets darker until the edge but i don't want to touch the top because i promise i see a lot of blue and I also see a little bit of light green. So I'm going to go with my light green on top of the yellow. And I create this amazing yellow. We don't, we don't have to have all the... We don't have to own every single color. We can make them. Wow, this is so cool. And the more colors I mix... The more I will have this amazing effect of iridescence. I have another yellow here that is a little bit like orangey. So I'm going to see how that goes. I'm going to start here. Very lightly. Because here I see that the green here at the top is a little bit warmer. So I wonder what would happen if I add that warmer green, that warmer orange, and then... Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Ah, oh, yes. And you can also, you know, you can try here. Like, for example, if I want to see what would this color mix with this color result in... You can try it here and the piece of paper is like, oh, that's a very interesting green as opposed to what would happen with the same green, but to dif uh, a different type of yellow. And look at that. It's very different. So you can play with those things. That's that's the beauty of the color pencil. But I really see blue, blue on the side. So I'm going to go with a very and even purple. So I'm going to start with a blue. I'm going to start very lightly with a blue here. And I'm sure I will go darker later. But, but for now, I'm just going to very, very, yeah, it's so pretty. And even I wonder if I had a lighter blue, what would happen? Yeah, that might work as well. So here and here. And one way to make purple is with blue and red. I have a purple here, but I want to show you how to make it. I'm going to add the, the, the darker blue. Here and here. Here I can even paint a little bit on top of the, the green because it's a little bit darker always over there. And it kind of mixes well with that green. 
So in order to make uh, a purple, I'm going to mix it with a uh, red. And I'm going to make the test here. So I'm going to start with blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of red. And when I use this red, this purple, I am not happy with. Let's try again and add a little different red. Let's see what would happen if I have this other red. And very lightly. Oh, that is more like it. That is a purple I like. So you see, like we practice outside and, and we're ready to go. So I am going to add very lightly. And it doesn't mean that I cannot use blue on top because you see, yeah, it's a little bit red in my opinion. It's too, too red for what I wanted. So I might go on top with a little bit of blue. Oh, this looks so pretty. I'm going to take photos after it. Yeah? So remember to, to take a look at the photos of the project. And then I'm going to come here. And here, I think I, I, I didn't paint too much blue, so it's getting very red. But the parts that the parts that are touching the blue are getting this very nice purpley color. So I'm going to go back with my blue. Whoa, purple. That's cool. So as you see, you don't have to have all the colors you can make them and it's much more interesting as a challenge whoa that's pretty so i'm gonna do the same thing here and you notice like i'm doing circles that also is, is something that you can try it's like instead of doing lines you can do tiny circles Whoa, I'm making a purple. That's cool. And this last piece here at the very, very end is kind of a brown. So I'm just going to find myself a brown. That's the reproductive apparatus. And I think it has also a little bit of... Yeah, I like I like mixing colors and see what what happens. I think I like that bluish brown. And then here I'm going to do the exact same thing that we did before with the blue. I'm going to start Yeah, cuz I see the blue touches the surface. Oh man, it's so pretty. Whoa. And then it comes to here. It's a little bit darker in, on the edges. The eyes are like purple, purple. I'll have to show you. If we were to see, let's draw something for fun. If we were going to see this beetle uh, in the front view, we would see both eyes very big. And then we would see his head. And we would see a little bit of hair here, kind of looks like the nose and the two mandibules and a little bit of hair, kind of, kind of like a beard. So if we were going to see the, the beetle, the front, we would see the antenna coming from here and here and here. So that would be a front view just of the head. So that's because we're on a top view, we only get to see a little bit of a little bit of the eyes. So we'll we'll color that too. Why not? We'll add a little bit. I don't have a reference for iridescence, but I can I can use what I'm doing here and have an idea. I see a little bit of green here. And I, you know what, in the areas where I see green, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue too. Whoa, that is pretty. And then let's add a little bit of the red that I liked before because I definitely, at least on this side, I see a little bit of purple. 
Oh, that's super. And because the eyes, I totally see them super purple. I'm going to start with red and I'm going to do darker where it joins the rest of the beetle. And the rest is a little bit lighter. And since I'm with the same color, I might as well do the front view. Look at this handsome guy. So darker here at the bottom, a little bit lighter at the top. And then because I want to create a nice purple, I think I'm going to use the blue and go on top. And I have a super duper purple with a little highlight even, which is super cool. So I'm going to do the same thing. A little bit darker when it's dark and a little bit lighter when it's lighter. That is cool. For the mouth part, I think I'm going to start with the blue and then I'm going to add a little bit of brown. But the tiny hairs, I found a photo of a front view of a beetle, this type of beetle, and those tiny colors were orange. Those tiny hairs were orange. So I'm going to totally, totally color them orange. Because this is a preserved specimen. I can't just flip it. I have to be very careful. So I'm just adding a little bit of shadow here and there. And these are the mandibules. And then these tiny, tiny hairs that are orangey right there. And then I'm going to finish the head with a little bit of a, of a green that mixes with the blue. And then, and then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow so it kind of shines like crazy and i want to get to that level of darkness here so i'm just going to go and do another pass with the same colors that i used before the yellow and the yellow here and i might leave that white paper paper color because i like that highlight And then I'm going to use the dark blue to, with circles, to go on top of these. And I don't mind if I eat a little bit of this color because it kind of blends very well. Whoa, this is very cool. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with the legs, but there's a difference with the legs that we have to be mindful of. And I'll tell you in a second, just a little bit of dark here. And here. And a little bit of the red here. Oh, this is not the red I used before. <laughs> there we go. I was getting that red. But oh well, it's okay because I... I it has... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use that to my advantage and, and use that color here a little bit. So, yeah. There we go. So we use a little bit of that red too. <laughs> there we go. So, one thing that I really, really, really want to do is recover some of the lines because as you notice, some of the lines were lost. So we can either go with a dark green. Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go with a dark green and redraw the outer lines of the beetle because I and the, in this inner one here. Is called the, the medial suture. So I'm gonna 
okay that line there i don't want to well, do this that's cool the medial suture and what was i doing yes i'm redrawing the head the torso and the abdomen you can do that with a graphite pencil or with these uh but yeah with the legs the only thing we have to be mindful is that they come from underneath so at least the first segment you have to give it a little bit of room until you start with the highlights because it comes from underneath so the light is not going to hit until it passes a little bit of distance so for example I'm going to start the highlights like almost half a centimeter because they are very dark and they're underneath. And then the other thing also that we need to have in mind, like the highlight is going to be, I can see it here, 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 and there. So I can see that the highlight is mostly at the tip of the tibia. So you have to look at your, at your specimen and see oh why does it have highlight there and that's super interesting so i'm just gonna color the legs green leaving that highlight there and then i'm gonna go with a little bit of yellow because i see that where it starts being the highlight is a little bit brighter and that, that makes sense. And sometimes the highlight is white, like a paper color, and sometimes it's yellow. So there we go. And then the last piece is kind of uh, dark green, I see. I don't see that many highlights. They're kind of flat, actually. They're kind of darker and flatter. So I'll start with the green, and then I can go on top and add a little bit of brown. And the fact that they're flat or they appear flat here, I will have to see photos of the specimen when this beetle was alive to see whether uh, before the specimen was preserved, um, these were just tiny, tiny cylinders. And because of the preservation process, maybe they, they dried a little bit and they flattened. So that's something I need to, I need to see. So that's our little feet, or tarsus. I'm gonna write that down. The foot is also called the tarsus. And then finally, I have the little antenna, which are a little bit, they don't have that much iridescence in the antenna as much as, I, as far as I can see. So it's like a dark green, so I'm gonna start with the green the brown and then i'm gonna go with the green and if you see your if you lose your lines you can go back with your graphite pencil and and redraw your lines or with your color pencil as we saw before i can see here that i have antennas so i'm gonna color them too and I also see that I need a little bit more of blue in the face to create that iridescent uh, look that we're after. And then for our uh, larva, it's going to be quite simple. I'm just going to use a very light brown for the wood. Very, very light, very light brown. And even the, the wood shapes that I drew, I can actually draw them with this brown. And I'm not being very precise, which is absolutely fine. And then the little head is a little bit red brown, so I might go with red and brown. And it's pretty much a very 
um, golden light color. But because some areas are in the shadow or a little bit closer to the ground, I might darken these. And because it's flat, this circle that we drew, we're going to darken it a little bit. And you see now it looks that it's not a round surface, it's flat. That's why it's called flat headed borer. And again, it doesn't mean that he bores us to death. It means that he drills holes. And I'm going to have fun with my title too, because I always like to have fun with my title. And let's see, where am I going to put this? I'm going to move the beetle a little bit on the side. And I'm going to write my title here. And if you don't want to rub all your drawing with your hand, you can put a little piece of paper. And let's see, this is the... This is the me metallic with two L's metallic wood boring. Let's see if I have enough space. <laughs> wood with two O's wood boring beetle tun 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 I'm going to put it here metallic wood boring beetle. And I'm going to add an asterisk that says that that means drills holes. Not boring. Super interesting. So I might add a little bit of color 